Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dynasty After Dark. I'm your host, Calvin Timms, and I got another bonus episode for you guys this week, and I'm going to be talking about Jordan Love and his dynasty value. And this is following up on Aaron Rodgers. So if you guys saw it earlier this week, I did do an Aaron Rodgers, where is he going to go? And the next day, the morning that the video released, there was actually the report that the Jets are in contact with Aaron Rodgers, totally unplanned and very unfortunate for my video because I put all this time and effort into recording it early and scheduled the upload and everything. And yeah, it comes out that the Packers are probably going to send Aaron Rodgers to the New York Jets, but that is what it is. But that said, if you haven't checked that one out yet, I do lay out some reasons why I think it's going to be very good for both sides to do that. And in doing that, Moving on from Aaron Rodgers, that means that they're going to be going to Jordan Love as their starting quarterback. So before we get into the reasons why I think Jordan Love is going to actually be a very, very good NFL player, if you can, please like, comment, and subscribe on the video wherever you're listening to it. It just helps out with the algorithm, get the podcast out to more people. We've been growing all offseason thanks to you guys, and I truly do appreciate that. Uh, Yesterday we had our running back combine review. And we had Mike from Smash Success. He was a great, great guest to have on the podcast. And if you can, go follow their podcast as well. Hit him up with any trade questions. He was a very good source for that information. Now, we did want to have him back on for the wide receivers because he was such a great guest to talk to. So we are pushing that one just a couple more days. That should come out early, early next week. But it'll be a little bit more filler before we get to the actual free agency that starts next week as well. So that said, jumping into Jordan Love, I think that he's going to be a very good player. Now let's go back to Jordan Love in college and his college stats here. Now Jordan Love was drafted in the 2020 draft. The Packers ended up trading up. I think it was like two or three picks to draft him in the mid-20s. All the rumors were that they were going to be trading up to go get Brandon Ayuk, who the Niners took right before that pick, literally one pick before they took Jordan Love. And I think, honestly, I've I've hypothesized this for years, that the Packers had arranged a trade to trade up for Brandon Ayuk. They did that before the Niners pick was official. They traded up, got all that sorted out, Niners take Brandon Ayuk. They didn't like any of the other wide receivers, and they kind of panicked. What do we do now with this pick? What were we going to do? I don't think they originally planned on taking Jordan Love, but they took Jordan Love in the end of the first round there, and since then Aaron Rodgers went on to have two MVP seasons and a mediocre season last year. But going back to college, Jordan Love, he was a very interesting draft prospect that year. And, you know, coming out of... Utah State, not the best conference and not the best season as well, his final season. Going into 2017, he played a little bit, wasn't the full-time starter in that year, was a little bit raw his first year at Utah State. Um, You know, 129 completions, 55% completion percent, only 1,600 yards, eight touchdowns, six interceptions. Not a great showing his freshman year sophomore season though he really starts to put it together 64 percent completion percent on 267 completions uh, 3500 yards passing 32 touchdowns six interceptions massive increase from year one to year two and then in year three there's a little bit of an injury I think there was a head coaching change as well he falls down a little bit in terms of stats. They threw more this year than he had in his sophomore year. 293 completions, only a 62% completion percentage, drops down a little bit there. 3,400 yards, so only a little bit less efficient there. But 20 touchdowns, 17 interceptions, not great. And if you follow me, I do think that that's a major issue with some of these young guys. Kenny Pickett, um, Will Levis, I don't like when you have a massive outlier season of interceptions now he comes into the nfl gets drafted by the green bay packers 
what were they looking for? Some of the strengths in his, you know, in his draft profile. We're going all the way back to the draft profile here. He makes athletic pocket exits when scrambling. These are from NFL.com. So, you know, this is what the scouts on there had listed as his pros, right? Confident passer attacking between the hashes. Um, Offense is built upon immediate and deep reads and throws. He has a very good variety of arm angles, arm strength that he can dime it into good windows. He has deep balls with very, uh, with plenty of touch and air underneath them. He's got arm talent and swagger to attack cover too. You know, lots of of good talent traits and, and pieces to Jordan Love's game that are to be excited about, right? Here's some of the weaknesses, though, as well. Too much staring and telegraphing. He doesn't have the best anticipation. Um, 31% completion percentage on the deep throws. He throws a pretty deep ball, but he's not the most accurate with it as well. Uh, Voidable pockets. He voids viable pockets at times, meaning he scrambles too much when he doesn't need to. Uh, He holds his eyes, which is very, very bad in the NFL because that leads to more interceptions and everything. And that's what we saw in college as well. Now, why do I think that he's going to be better moving forward? You look at it, he's been behind Aaron Rodgers now for three years. Aaron Rodgers, whatever you say about him, personality aside, he is a Hall of Fame quarterback. He's just a Hall of Famer, right? And, you know, he the year they drafted him, he goes on to have an MVP season, and, you know, it's wild. Nobody expected this. Everyone kind of thought that Aaron Rodgers was kind of tooling down in his career, He goes on to be the number two fantasy quarterback that year. 372 completions, 4,300 yards, 48 touchdowns with only five interceptions. And the next year, number six fantasy quarterback, 366 completions, 4,100 yards, 37 touchdowns, four incompletions. And then this last year, this is where it really started to fall apart. 350 completions. They get rid of Devontae Adams. Obviously, that's going to have an impact. 3,700 yards. It wasn't a bad season. 26 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Mostly the biggest thing for Aaron Rodgers this last year was the increase in interceptions. That's the highest he's ever ever had in a season in his career. Now, if they're going to be moving on, and one of the, the, the best traits about Aaron Rodgers, he does not really turn the ball over. 12 interceptions is the highest. The next highest after that is 11, his sophomore year in the as a starter in the NFL. Other than that, he hasn't broken double digits ever in his career. Always a very high touchdown to interception ratio. Jordan Love struggled with that. He has all the tools at his disposal to be very, very good, but didn't always make the right reads, didn't really have the best, you know, anticipation and and things like that. So Aaron Rodgers is going to be able to help a young player like that quite heavily. Now, you look at Jordan Love, and he really has not played much at all. So in 2021 was the first time he saw any game action. He saw a full game against Kansas City, and this is kind of the game that everyone goes back to and why they think he's not going to be very good. Context around that game. He played 100% of snaps. That was the COVID toe game for Aaron Rodgers. 34 attempts, 19 completions, 190 yards, averaging 10 per there, which isn't terrible, actually. One touchdown, one interception, five rushing attempts for 25 yards, so not too bad there. Sacked one time, one fumble, but he was blitzed 46% of the plays in that game, 46%. So of his 34 dropbacks, what is that, 17 of them, he was blitzed, almost 16 or 17 of them. That's not great for your first ever NFL start, first ever. Now, his next game in that season was the last week against uh, or against Detroit, the Detroit Lions. He played 54% of snaps. They basically played him the second half of the game. Uh, 10 of 17 for 134, one touchdown, two interceptions. Wasn't really anything. And going back to that Kansas City game really quickly as well, the other thing to think about too, so Aaron Rodgers gets toe COVID or whatever, and they tell him that he's not going to be able to start in that game on Friday of the week. The game is on Sunday. So Jordan Love gets told on Friday, hey, you're going to be the starter in two days. Practice up. So he has a day and a half, basically, of practice with the starters, and he doesn't have Devontae Adams in that game either. So 
It's just not a great situation for a rookie for the first ever start in the NFL. Now you go to 2022. He played one game, well, really one drive this year um, for the most part because the Packers were really trying to get into playoff contention the entire year. They came down to the wire at the very end of the season. Um, But that said, the one drive that he did have was the end of the game against Philadelphia. Again, they didn't really have much practice prep time, but he played 20% of the snaps in that game. uh, Six completions on nine attempts for 113 yards and one touchdown against Philly, which was one of the best defenses in the league this last year. So much improved versus what we've seen in 2021. Again, I think him sitting behind Aaron Rodgers is going to be able to channel some of those physical tools into production on the field. Now, they're going to give him a lot of run in 2023 with Aaron Rodgers off the team. They're still going to have to pay a decent amount of Aaron Rodgers' contract. They're kind of cash strapped um, from the salary cap perspective, so they're not going to be able to do a ton there. There's a lot of rumors that if they do move on from Aaron Rodgers, they're going to be able to get extra second-round picks, maybe even a first next year that they can you know, maybe use on a couple more weapons. The weapons on this team, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, they're all very young. They did get Aaron Jones back. They still have A.J. Dillon, but everybody's got a, got them kind of penciled into a tight end, a Michael Mayer in the first round of this year's draft, maybe someone in the second round, um, you know, uh, a Zay Flowers or somebody like that to the team in the second round. I've even seen a few people take Jackson Smith and Jigba to this team in the first round, which I would love personally. But I just don't really see that as the Packers style. But I think that they're going to try and set Jordan Love up in all situations to be successful. He hasn't played much over three years. That doesn't mean he's bad. He was sitting behind Aaron Rodgers, a Hall of Fame quarterback. So just because he wasn't able to beat out Aaron Rodgers doesn't mean that he's not a good quarterback. Now let's talk about value, right? Me and my co-host, Dale, who is going to be back for tomorrow's episode, we're going to be dropping a mock draft, NFL mock draft for you guys. So a little bit of fun there on a Friday. Um, So make sure you guys come back and tune in for that. We like talking non-football stuff, non-fancy football stuff every now and then as well. So make sure you go check that out. Let us know your thoughts. Hopefully the we pick the right guys for your teams out there, but you can hit us up on YouTube or Twitter and let us know down in the comments. And yeah, I just don't really see them doing a wide receiver, but I could see them taking someone like a Dalton Kincaid, a Michael Meyer in the first round of this year's draft. Both of us agree that Jordan Love's value, we would be willing to spend a very, very high second on Jordan Love in a super flex league. If he's going to be the starter, the offensive mind of Matt LaFleur is very good. I like Matt LaFleur as a coach. I think that he was able to, he's a lot of the reason why Aaron Rodgers had a resurgence in his career. You know, again, he was starting to tail off at the end there and they draft Jordan Love and, oh, that's the thing that sparked Aaron Rodgers to be better. But you know, his first year with, with Matt LaFleur, 26 touchdowns, four interceptions. It's a whole new scheme. The second year is when they really jumped up, 48 touchdowns, 37 the next year. We already talked about those a little bit. But I think Matt LaFleur was able to unlock that with this offense versus Mike McCarthy, who they had until 2018. So that's when they moved on from him. And that's where you really saw Aaron Rodgers starting to, to slide down the boards a little bit there. So... I think that Matt LaFleur is going to be able to utilize Jordan Love and he's a good enough offensive mind that he's going to be able to exercise the best out of Jordan Love this upcoming season. And if you're having if you want a a cheap, potentially awesome stud for a quarterback who has a lot of tools and a lot of traits that could be very good for fantasy football, Jordan Love is a guy that you want to go invest in. Again, he's probably not going to cost more than a mid second round pick in Superflex. And once they trade Aaron Rodgers, though, that's going to jump up into the first round. I think that's a little too rich for someone like Jordan Love. So if you can go get him now, that is my best advice until the Aaron Rodgers trade to the Jets is official. We never know. There is still a chance that that Aaron Rodgers is back with the Packers and they trade him that way, you know, more organically that way. But um Yeah, I just think that Aaron Rodgers is going to be gone. Jordan Love is still in a little bit of a depressed value state at this point in time. So go invest in Jordan Love. 
spend a second round pick, you might be getting a stud starter for many, many years. He's only 24 years old. I know everyone likes to talk about quarterback age and everything. Oh, 24 years old is the first year that he's going to be a full-time starter. That's way too old. It doesn't matter. He can be playing at 20. He can be playing as the starter for 10 more years and it really wouldn't change a thing. He could be the starter for 15 years and he'd be about the age of Aaron Rodgers right now. So it does not matter a quarterback's age unless they're getting up there like, you know, a Taysom Hill or somebody like that who their first start was they were 31 years old. That's not not really great there. You kind of have some bigger red flags. So 24 years old, first year as a starter, I'm not concerned. Spend a second-round pick on Jordan Love. Go pick him up before he jumps up into the first. And if you even if you're not sold on Jordan Love, as soon as they move Aaron Rodgers, you can flip Jordan Love for a first rounder, a late first rounder. So you're just upgrading that second round anyway for free just by waiting a couple more days. So that's my advice. I think that Aaron, that I think that Jordan Love is going to be a stud. Um, I don't think he's going to be a top 12 guy, but I think he's going to be a mid wider or mid quarterback too, you know, probably in the 15 to 16 range perennially for the next few years. And I think that you should invest in him early. So let me know your thoughts again on Twitter, on YouTube, down in the comments. Leave a like, leave a subscription to the channel. Tell the podcast to one friend. Again, we're trying to grow the podcast organically, not pay for farm clicks and whatever. I don't really know all this stuff, but we're going to be trying to get some guests on too. So if you have any guests that you want to see on the podcast to talk over any subjects, hit us up in our comments down below. Recommend some people and we would be happy to reach out and get them on the podcast so we can talk about all kinds of dynasty stuff with them as well. So thank you guys for joining us. This was a pretty quick one, but yeah, come back tomorrow for the NFL mock draft. Thank you guys for all the support that you've been giving us this entire off season. Follow me again on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin until next time. Have a good night.